For nearly three decades, Provident Solutions has been providing solutions you can trust. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Joe Belderman, Director of Consulting Services here at Provident, and I'm with Tim Baker, our Solutions Architect. We felt it was so important to talk to you about a topic that's going to affect a lot of people uh, coming up here in the next few months. We wanted to record a special video. So we're here in Tinley Park at our Provident headquarters um, talking about Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 today. Um, a lot of organizations still use these operating systems and uh, there's an end to that shelf life that Microsoft has announced. Um, we're still seeing a lot of organizations with those uh, operating systems. And so we wanted to uh, create a short thought leadership video here centered around that. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and uh, for subscribing to our channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to click that link right below the uh, video here and subscribe to our video. Uh, so Tim, tell me what's happening on January 14, 2020. So Microsoft has uh, reached end of support on that date for Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008. What that really means is uh, after that date, Microsoft will not uh, offer any security patches for those operating systems. And if you have a major issue where you need to call them and uh, seek their help from their support professionals, uh, they won't be able to help you. They'll, uh, they'll tell you that uh, you need to upgrade. So uh, it's really important uh, for you to uh, be aware of that and to be figuring out, you know, if you do have those operating systems in your environment, what you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, super important. So obviously we don't have a crystal ball. We can't look into the future and say, well, this is gonna happen on January 15, but what's the impact for people who have Windows 7 or Windows Server 2008 on, on January 15? What's, what's, the, what's the for sure impact and what's the potential impact? You know, the reality is, is come January 15, you're going to start your computer if it's on Windows 7 and it's going to turn on. That It's not just going to suddenly stop functioning. The worry though is that uh, no one's going to fix it if there's a security vulnerability. So if someone develops a, a virus or some sort of malware uh, to, to, that affects Windows 7 or Server 2008, there's no Calvary coming to fix that for you. It is. Uh, it, it's a risk that, that there's no fixes anymore for. So um, that that's really our concern is is no one is watching over that software and making sure that uh, any of those holes that might be found are getting patched up. Right, right. Yeah, and so obviously, again, we don't know exactly what risk could exist, but um, what, what are we thinking could happen or what could potentially um, really cause some major disruption for these operating systems? on January 15th or after that? You know, the biggest one is, is that malware, something that uh, infects those computers. Uh, they can use that as an entry point into the remainder of your network. So, you know, even if you have, you know, let's say you have 100 computers in your organization and you only have 10 left with Windows 7, well, if they can infect that Windows 7 and get on that, that's kind of a springboard for them to get the rest of your network. So, so yeah, you've done great. You've gotten 90 out of 100 computers updated. Uh, but you really need to focus on getting those last 10 because because any of those in there um, is potential exposure to your data. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, your employees' information or your customers' information or anything like that. Um, maybe they want to sell that to someone. Maybe they want to um, use that as a launching point to try to infect them to get more data and you know just. There's a lot of bad actors out there and anything that we can do to uh, make their life a little bit harder, to protect ourselves, sleep a little bit better at night, uh, is worth the investment. Yeah. I know particularly with uh, Windows 7, that was a really popular operating system for a lot of organizations. It's kind of the uh, successor to um, uh, Windows Vista and the precursor to Windows 8, which were both kind of, say, rocky operating systems. Yes. So, I think a lot of organizations adopted Windows 7 for uh, workstations and user endpoints and have been very comfortable with those because it has been a really rock solid operating system. But it's important to know that Microsoft is ending support for those operating systems uh, come, come January 14th. So um, if I still have a Windows 7 workstation or a server that's running Windows Server 2008, even Server 2008 R2, um, what should I be thinking about? What should I be doing? You have three options. 
Okay. <laughs> There's always options. Uh, I would recommend replacing the computer. The, the likely scenario is if you, you are running Windows 7 today that that computer is three, four, five, maybe older than that. And, and you're probably due for a new computer anyways. And that, that will be your fastest and uh, least path of resistance to get to Windows 10, which is where you should be going. Yep. Um, and out of the deal, you get a new computer, which is always good. Um, let's say your computer isn't quite that old. Maybe you chose to get Windows 7 on it when it shipped out from Dell or HP or wherever. Um, you're looking at an upgrade, so that that might be just uh, downloading it and installing it. You might have to buy it. It's not terribly expensive, but uh, your option there is to uh, upgrade it. And if you have to buy it, it's probably gonna cost you about $200. On the, on the Server 2008 side, there is an interesting play that Microsoft has also released. Um, so you may have heard of Microsoft Azure. That is their cloud um, environment where uh, you can essentially outsource that infrastructure to Microsoft for them to manage and maintain and you run your business through servers in Microsoft's cloud data center. They have a program now that will allow you to take your server 2000 operating system, move it up into their Azure cloud and, and for doing that, they will give you three years of support on that 2008 server. So if you're in that boat, and you're kind of on the fence for a while now about Microsoft Azure, uh, that's a great option to at least temporarily buy you time to, to make that transition to server 2016 or server 2019. Again, we just really wanted to emphasize the criticalness of what's happening in uh, mid-January 2020. We're not too far away from that now. And um, we wanna make sure that organizations and individuals are prepared for um, you know, what may be lurking. Again, we don't know, but uh, we have a strong suspicion that with the number of uh, legacy operating system deployments that are out there yet, there may be uh, some vulnerabilities that could get exposed shortly after January 14th. So if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us at www.provinet.com or give us a call 708-468-2000. Again, thanks so much for watching our video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please take a minute and do that. Enjoy the rest of your day.